Fireside Chat. Hey, what's up? Welcome to the Uber Entertainment live stream. Um, which camera am I looking at? I don't even know. Is it this one? Is it this one? <laughs> what, what camera am I looking at? I have no idea. It's that one, isn't it? No, it's not. Now it's that one. Okay, now it's that one. I'm the community manager here at Uber Entertainment, Brad Nicholson, and I'm joined on the couch with John, no why, Maver. That's right, no why. No why at all. So, big day today, or big day yesterday even. Beta came out for Planetary Annihilation. We're going to show off a little bit of the game. It's going to be great. Should have a good time here. I think Madman Mike over here, <laughs> he's going to be driving the build. Yep, that's me. He's a killer. <laughs> you are mad, Mike. Madman Mike. Let me get this out of your way. <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. A lot of new mechanics were added into the beta. Of course, planet smashing, that's a big thing. That's the biggest thing, really. Yeah, I mean, it's huge. It's great. It's fun. Hopefully, we'll get one in on the stream today. <laughs> That'd be rad. That's what we're trying to do, right? That's the goal, is to show the folks the big boom. <laughs> I, you know, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I was playing a little bit this morning. Got, a, got into the moon, right? Then the, the dude noticed that I was kind of like not on the planet, right? He sent his commander up after me, shot him down with an orbital unit, won the game. It was beautiful. Yeah, you can't chase after commanders with your commander. That's like that's like going after the other guy's king with your king. It's not going to end well. Yeah, absolutely. Mike just started the game, actually. We're playing with two other guys in the office. I think it's DJ and Mark are uh, playing against Mike and Kevin. Yep. So it's, it's nice to be here on a Friday where we're probably not going to work all weekend, at least not all of us. <laughs> right. Uh, last couple of weeks of getting the beta done have been pretty insane to say the least. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody's uh, been working so hard, working so late too. But you know, you guys came I felt, out. I felt like a slacker leaving at two o'clock in the morning <laughs> one night. I was like, I'm such a slacker, it's, it's, it's only two. But I tell you what, when you guys came in in the morning, because I, I always try to get here nice, bright and early. When you guys came in in the morning, you look fresh as a rose. Just look great. I don't know about me. To this morning I woke up and I was just like, Oh, what day is it? Oh, are we doing a live stream today? Right. Well, like you were talking with that guy, it's like I think finally you're letting yourself get sick. You know, you're just like yeah. relaxing. You're like, okay, it's over. Let's do it. So what, what's going on right now, Mike? What you, what, what, where's your head at? Uh, right now plan? I am working on getting some economy up and then trying to scout out where the other team started. Okay, all right. So Mike, I heard a rumor that uh, you've got the AI building ground units now. Yes, I do. The AI is building bots, bot factories, bot fabbers. When Those, are they uh, going to get that in their, in their hands? Probably not until at least next week. You heard it here first next week. <laughs> next week, for sure. We're trying to keep it to one build a day, right? Because yeah. otherwise, <clears throat> you know, with the current user uh, population that we have, it's a lot more than we had during alpha. I think we sent out, you know, we doubled or tripled the size of the population. Yeah. So doing an, a, a new build transition is a, a little bit more heavyweight than it used to be. Yeah, absolutely. Making games is hard. So I mean, like everything they add has the potential to break something. So you guys have to be super careful, kind of like walking on glass almost. Make sure to get everybody through the weekend. Yeah, that's the idea. So I mean, we've got a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of stuff coming down the pipe. Um, obviously, Planet Smashing is in there, but it's still pretty raw. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of tuning we have to do on that. There's a lot of balance stuff we have to do in Orbital, yeah. and uh, but it, you know, it's already pretty cool. Yeah, no, it's pretty rad. It's pretty rad. Uh, one big thing I think folks are probably going to notice too, if they haven't played in a little bit since Alpha, at least, less mineral spots on this map, less metal rather. Excuse me. Yeah, so the whole metal thing, you know, we felt like there was too much before. Mm -hmm. It was too easy. It wasn't creating, there wasn't enough conflict created over metal. Right. But I, I'm really not happy with, with the kind of current layout. It's a little too uneven, and there's, you know, there's, there's, there's too much advantage given to certain players. Like, there's a little bit of a luck factor involved. Oh, right. So we've got a couple of those metal sliders in the planet. We'll, we'll enable those eventually. Um, you know, I'm a little concerned about giving too much customization there too soon because then we won't we don't have a good big knob for the community to play with that we all play the same way to kind of test out how it, how it works. So this, you know, we may have we may have dialed it back a little too much in terms of how much metal you get. Uh, some people have been saying, you know, the games aren't as big. I don't I don't know if I if I believe that, or maybe they were too ridiculous before. But right. you know, this will definitely be it's a sandbox, right? right. So we're going to let you put as much metal in as you want ultimately. Yeah. Um, to have as big. A big, as big of a game as you want, you know? A small planet with sparse metal, small planet with lots of metal, big planet with sparse metal, right. big planet with a little bit of metal or a lot of metal, five planets, one of which has a lot of metal, four others that don't. I mean, there's, you know, there's a lot of sand in the box. Yeah, I, actually, you want to zoom out a little bit and maybe show people the solar system too whenever you get all set up, Mike? Sure. Check this out. 
So we got, so it looks like. So we got the sun, we got a planet with a couple of different moons around it, and then out here, we've got a couple of little small moons, might as well call them asteroids. I like it, I like it. So this is the scale of the game. This is the thing that continues to impress me. I mean, planetary annihilation takes a genre to a planetary scale. I mean, this is massive right here. It's incredible. You could you could argue it's bigger than planetary scale. It's interplanetary yeah. scale. Yeah. I mean, and with the tools we give people, th this this system actually was designed by Mark uh, just a few minutes ago. So yeah, the system editor has <clears throat> actually kind of exceeded my expectations in terms of what you can do. And obviously, there's a lot more stuff that we're going to be able to do. Like, we don't have a good... Right now, if you want to build an asteroid belt, you're kind of like placing individual planets. I want to add some tools in for, for doing more of that and have some other types of bodies in the system that, that uh, do some interesting things. Obviously, gas giants are something that uh, we're still working on. Oh, that'd be cool. Those would be good resource generators. So, I've got a... You know, one of the questions I get a lot is, um, you know, what are the kind of major features that are missing? Yeah. Um, and I, sometimes I'll kind of drop notes in the forum about different different uh, things. Um, you know, one area that we really haven't explored all that much that I'm intently interested in ex exploring more and doing more with over the next few months is the interface. Um, you know, this is things like uh, interface for doing formations, area commands. Uh, you know, more advanced kind of uh, setups for that kind of stuff. That's that's going to be a uh, a big deal. We've got to get get more work in there on the game modes and game configs and things like that. Um, there's obviously lots of matchmaking stuff we, we want to do uh, and ladders and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. you know, now we're getting to the point in the project where we're going to be able to start attacking some of that kind of stuff. So, we're uh, really looking forward to to you know getting there. Yeah, I know. I know folks really want a friends list. That's it's kind of the yeah thing. friends kind of list adoption. exactly all that kind of stuff. Which is definitely coming. Uh, uh, Galactic definitely. War. We're going to be adding more units. You know, the, the basic units that we have there are for the most part they're they're just that they're basic, right? You know, there's a bunch of different things like uh, amphib units and you know more more tech two unit roles and all that kind of stuff. Uh, lots and lots of polish and performance stuff and. You know, we've we've built the team up now to the size where I, you know, we can get things accomplished pretty quickly. So yeah, absolutely. excited about that. You know, I, th I also think we should we should pay homage to the fact that it's been almost exactly a year since the Kickstarter ended. That's incredible, isn't it? It's it's absolutely incredible. I mean, if you look back, just look back at the Kickstarter. It was a video that we created. We had a little bit of engine tech that we'd used before, but mm -hmm. pretty much every this whole game has been built in a year, which I think is. Uh, I can't even describe how I feel about that. It's 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 insane. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, the scale of the game, especially to do this in a year, uh, is amazing. And how about that trailer we just put out, by the way? The, yeah, I mean, Steve Thompson is the master of of the trailer. You know, the same so the same guy that did the original trailer. Steve did that trailer, and he's and uh, you know, I can't wait till we do the, the launch trailer. Yeah. Right? Oh man. Oh man, it's gonna be so good. So one thing we could do today, actually, since I got my handy little computer here, I can take some questions from the chat. So if you have one for uh, for John or Mike, if you want to distract them, feel free to fire them at me. I'll ask. How are you doing, Mike? How are you feeling so far in the game? Uh, feeling okay. Uh, looks like uh, <coughs> WJ, or, uh, DJ and Garrett are already going uh, Tech Two bot on us. Oh really? So, so we're playing a little answer? bit of catch up. Okay, playing catch up right now. Yeah. I'm it looks like you got an advanced air factory right there, right? Not advanced bot factory. Of course, bot you can always hit Control C, Control V on that thing and catch up. <laughs> <laughs> that that is that is true. But that'd so, be cheating, and that's unsportsmanlike. So for those you know, for those of you playing at home, you don't have access to this, but we obviously have some developer uh, tools. I'll use the word tool. <laughs> Lead hacks. <laughs> right. Lead hacks. And one of the things we can do is just cut and paste units. You know, select stuff. You know, select stuff. Hit Control C, hit Control V. <laughs> and uh, we also have uh, some people know about this because they've seen it in the data files. We have this thing called the Avatar, and it's basically an air construction unit that generates. You know, what is it? A hundred thousand metal and a hundred thousand energy, <laughs> and can build anything in about a second. It's pretty amazing. It's a pretty handy bot. It's very, it's very useful for for you know testing things quickly. So let's let's hit a question here. Let me let me find one. This chat moves so quick. Oh, here's a good one. Easy one. Hey Uber. Question mark. He also adds that we're awesome. So hey. Hey, what's up? What's up? <laughs> That's not a question. 
I, you know what? Hey, it's like Jeopardy. So that was the answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that was a question that qualifies. John, if you, if you put a question mark on it, so like, hey, yeah, yeah, hey, hey yeah. Uber, hey. So, John, how do you feel about the performance on the current build? We got a lot of questions along this line as well. So, um, it's not even close to where I want it to be, but um, we've, we made some pretty good improvements on some of the game side, right? This, mm -hmm. The sim and uh, you know the Chrono Cam stuff works a lot faster now, but um, it, the performance is it's okay, but uh, we have a long way to go, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm I'm always you know critical of that though. Um, you know we should get we should really get Steve Smith on here sometime uh, to talk about all of the different performance optimizations that we're going to be doing over the next you know several months. Um, there's just there's just a lot there's a lot there to do. Yeah, it always seems like his uh, his docket's full. It's it's absolutely full. Um, yeah, we got so. some action going on here. Mike, how, how you doing? Uh, doing okay. All right, you feeling it? I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. <laughs> Brad, how do you seem to stay so happy? I'm just a happy guy, you know? I, I got a good pump this morning, I'll be honest. You know, went to the gym, felt great. Chest day, best day of the week. I live for it. You like chest day? Oh, yeah. chest day is the best. It really is. I, I can't express to you, like as soon as you you get that first one in and like your, your, your muscles just like get filled with blood and it's just like, you can't hardly move. Also, he's not the guy that's here programming at two o'clock in the morning. True, that's true. <laughs> so I can afford to go to the gym. Um, let's see, what else have we got here? You know, I, I like today because we're just, you know, we're taking this casual, we're just kind of showing off yeah. the game, taking some questions. It's it's an, it's nice to just kind of, you know, talk with people about the game. Yeah, absolutely. Mike's doing some work here. What's your APS there, Mike? Do we have a, a stat for that in the uh, UI? No, app? I don't think we have a stat for that yet. Can we throw up uh, the game on the second screen? Real quick. The game is up. It's the chat for Twitch. Yeah, we have chat on our... Oh, you want to see the screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. Gotta see what's going on. Yeah, this on isn't here. gonna be like the Petard 24 hour marathon stream here. <laughs> I don't right? think we have the endurance for that. Yeah. No, but that was awesome that he did it. That's incredible. It really is. Let's see here. You know, one of the one of the other things that's that has been bothering me for a long time that we just haven't had time to fix yeah. is I really want a lot more contrast um, in the planets. There's some guys out there that have done some shader tweaks on their own to, to kind of give, give it more contrast. So I was talking to Steve this morning and he is actually working on the post-process pipeline right now, which will give us, you know, we got, we got in the, the correct um, gamma correct stuff, but you know, now we need to get in the tone mapping and that kind of stuff. And that's gonna allow us to push the lighting engine a lot more. Uh, you know, I really wanna see bases on the night side be lit up. Um, in fact, I've been thinking about adding a unit to the game that's effectively like a light post that lights up an area, uh, so that there's some there's some gameplay there. We'll we'll kind of see how that works out, but I think there's a lot more interesting things we can do with the day night than we've been doing so far. Oh, that'd be cool. Uh, will we be able to see icons of units slash buildings we have scouted even after the fog of war returns? Oh. So right now the way that works is if you get an icon if it's on radar, mm -hmm. if it is a building you will get basically a um, a ghost image that should be targetable in the same way as an icon. So I'm not sure if somebody wants something different from that or or if they misunderstand how it works or yeah. if I'm misunderstanding the question. But All right, we'll fire another one. Oh, we're giving away codes in the stream as well. So enjoy that if you still don't have a copy of Planetary Annihilation, which, you know, you should. It's a fantastic value. I love it. It's a good game. And, you know, I, I want to point out that Basically, when, when money comes in the door uh, for this game, we put it back into the game. We've been making the team bigger, and it wouldn't be possible without all, the, without all these people that are, that are out there. The, pe the people that backed it initially got it going, and the people that are buying the game now are still really supporting the game. Yeah. I, so. like, I love how we can build on water, by the way. I, it's just so cool. Yeah, but the water continues to evolve, mm -hmm. you know, thought-wise. Um, Part of the issue with that is we wanted to make sure that we could support play on a pure water planet. You know, yeah. if you ended up with 100% water, is that still a useful, a useful planet? So we're trying to make that happen. Um, I, I'd like to differentiate it a little <laughs> bit more, but 
we'll see. Like there may be, there may not always be an exact water analog. It might be that you use a ship instead of a building or something along those lines. So we're still working through all that. And that's the cool thing about beta, right? Like, you know, you, you have this time to make these decisions and respond to feedback in real time almost. Yeah, I, I mean, can you imagine if we were making this game but nobody had ever played it except for the people in the office? Yeah. That's, that's how it worked for, you know, other games I've worked on. You know, we've never been able to see people streaming the game the same day that we release a build. I mean, it's like having the biggest QA team on Earth. And the coolest one. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the coolest one. Man, those defenses. So I gotta say, I gotta say something. Uh -huh. Just watching this, there was something yeah. that I'm really, really super excited about, which is we are this close to having our burning trees in there. Oh yeah. So that yeah. the tr you know the trees are actually in the sim now. They're part of the thing, and we're gonna be able to start doing stuff with them really soon. So units are gonna have to pathfind around them to some extent, and when they start getting hit, you know, stray shots, they're gonna catch on fire and. You know, when a nuke goes off, you'll end up with like a ring of burning trees around it that'll like kind of spread and stuff. It's gonna be awesome. And it's just around the corner. Yeah, before the trees were like a mesh, right? Over the world? Was well, they were they were these they were instance objects, but they just weren't being taken into account in the sim. Okay. Because okay. we were concerned about adding, you know, hundred or two hundred thousand objects in there. So last week we basically bit that bullet, got them in, in in there, did some optimizations. So even though the performance of the game is is higher now in terms of of the sim, it's higher than it was, but we have an order of magnitude more objects. So we, we really sped it up a lot. All right, here's a question. Will modders have access to post-process post -process effects for Makama slash mod tools? Yes, there that's easy. Um, I don't know exactly what Steve is doing in terms of setting up the post-process pipeline, but I do know the goal was to make it configurable from data files, so you'll be able to change the shaders. Uh, and hopefully add in new effects into the chain. So give me give me the game update here. What's the lay of the land, Mike? Uh, we're holding them back for now. Okay, um, all right. And what, yeah. what what exactly are they doing to you here? We got, I saw a lot of they air. They haven't been sending very many attacks at us. They just seem to be mounting a force. They're not really doing anything to harass us yet. They're turtling? They're turtling. That's essentially what it, it sounds like. That sounds like Mark right there. That, that does sound like Mark. Pro turtler, and then when you go in on him, you, you discover that he has a ton of units, and maybe you shouldn't have done that. You know, one of one of the things that we really did in the last balance tweak is really up the power of the laser towers. We increased their cost, but we also uh, made them a lot more powerful. And I, for a while, I'd been thinking maybe we went too far, but I I haven't really seen it turning into a turtle fest because of that. You can still crack bases. There's a, enough long range stuff to crack those things that you can still do it. Yeah. But, uh, those, you know, I want people to be afraid when they see a laser tower, you know, it's like, if anybody played uh, original CNC, there there was the obelisk. Yes, of Nod, right? You get close to it yeah. and it's like, mm, yeah. and it starts to go and you're just like, oh crap, I need to get out of here. You're worried about you it. You know, I want you to be worried about those laser, those laser towers. So you have access to advanced fabric now as well, right? I do. Yeah, so I'm take a look trying at that. To get our, I'm trying to get our uh, advanced economy up. Yeah, so that's a that's an advanced energy plant. That's one of those late game kind of things. These things pump out a ton yeah. of energy. Do you know how much it is offhand? Uh, Three thousand, right? It it's is five thousand. Five thousand. Yeah, it's a significant multiple. I think the regular ones are six hundred or six, yeah, yeah six hundred. I think right now. You got to shoot for that, especially when you want to try out all our new orbital toys. I mean, you want as many of those advanced energy things as you can possibly get. So one of the one of the other interesting things that went into the uh, into the build was. Uh, the energy stuff was just totally broken before. Mm. Uh, you know, things like uh, uh, lobbers, or sorry, Hulkins, which by the way is named after Jerry Hulkins from Penny Arcade. Okay. I talked to him at, at PAX about it. It's awesome. Um, and things like uh, catapults uh, and things like um, uh, radar even weren't properly using energy. So now if you, if you stall your economy out, you're not gonna get any radar coverage, just as an example, so. That's yeah, I found that out the hard way. You found that out the hard way. Uh huh. <laughs> it was it was funny because uh, Nick uh, went and looked at it all, and he's like, "It all it's it all totally works." Like you wrote that initial stuff, Mike, I think. And and Nick was like, "It, it totally works. Like it's all set up." And I'm like, "Are you sure?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm totally sure." And then like the next day, he comes to me and he's like, "No, no, no. It 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 looked like it was working, but it really wasn't." <laughs> right. And, because what was happening is the economy object was getting created and destroyed every frame and like reset. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> for every for everything. Yeah, the original economy system was not set up for that. 
It so is now. We're, we're getting close to orbital, I feel like. I mean, we're... Can you explain the new um, uh, planet you are? Yeah. It's, you want to talk about the celestial view? Well, are we going to wait until we have some Oh, some they're engines? in orbit. Oh, we have a commander in orbit. They're in orbit. That means they're leaving if you... That means they're cowards is what it means. <laughs> Where, where's he going, I wonder? Uh, we'll see. He might be going there. If not, then uh, further out. So the, it looks the, like he's going here. Let's let's talk about the the planet UI for a little bit. Yeah. So we wanted to have kind of a meta UI. Uh, you could almost think about it as almost like a mini game on top of the regular game. So when you're in the celestial view, zoom, zoom back up, Mike. Go to celestial, unless you're going to die or something. Nope, not going to die. So if if you look in the right uh, hand corner of the screen, you can see those are all the planets, and then you can see there's these little icons that look like engines. That's how many engines you need to control the planet. And once you have that many, you can get, give it an order to attack. This is going to be expanded over the next couple of weeks uh, so that you can actually change the orbits of the planets as well, not just smash them into stuff. Uh, the actual number of icons that you have filled in, filled in is your net uh, delta V. In other words, uh, you know, we had to solve this problem of, let's say Brad is building stuff, and I'm building stuff, and he's got three engines, and I have three engines. Well, who's in control of the planet? Oh, yeah. Right? So basically, the way it works is you can counter engines by building your own. So if you build one and I build one, they cancel. We have a net of zero. Okay. Right? So, uh, and I think right now what we do is we add up all of the other engines, and you have to, you have to counter not just one player, but potentially multiple players' worth. Wow. I don't expect it to happen that much. I think mostly you'll battle over it, but you know, yeah. these are the kinds of game design problems you still have to have a solution for because inevitably it will come up. Well, well for example, this problem, I think, I think we fixed it with the latest update, being able to delete an opposing player's commander if you pick him up in an orbital unit, right? That was a thing? <laughs> you know, it's really funny because I remember <laughs> during the development of, of Total Annihilation, Jeff uh, Petko implemented the initial uh, transport. Mm -hmm. And he, he wanted... Uh, you to be able to pick up the enemy commander because it was kind of fun and a thing to, thing to pull off. It's funny. And so he had to work like really, really, really hard to make that possible because <laughs> the whole UI and everything wasn't set up to let you interact with the other the other units like that. Here we did it by accident. <laughs> 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 and you can just like go down, you know, pick them up and, and delete. And I, I don't actually object conceptually to the idea that you can do that. But it has to be tuned really carefully, so it's difficult. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in TA, you had to fly, basically, fly your Atlas through the enemy's defenses to get to his commander. Here, it's like orbital, psh, just come right down, pick the guy up. So, yeah. Yeah. So, in other words, we may, may re-enable that, but we have to tweak it really carefully to make it not, <laughs> you know, not Imba. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, where, where do you think uh, Mark and DJ went? Uh, they're on this planet here. They're on the one. All right, all right. But I have no vision of it, so I don't know. Uh -oh. So, so what there's, you know, to. I was talking about the whole concept of modifying your planetary yeah. orbit. There's still some other things we have to do. We have to get the nukes so that they can launch between planets when they get close enough. Uh, there's still some gravity well stuff that we need to do. I mean, there's there's a lot of little tweaks that are going to happen to orbital stuff. That looks like a nice big Hulkins. Oh wow! Look at that. Oh yeah, that's a move. So I want to talk about something else that's kind of oh, that's yeah. interesting. So Valve today oh. announced their new fancy controller. Yeah, I had been hearing rumors about this controller for literally years. Never saw one. Never you know talked to Valve in detail about it. But today they announced this Steam controller. It's got two track pads on it and all this kind of stuff. And uh, I think that that's going to be pretty cool for playing Planetary Annihilation. At least I want to I try to support it. I mean, obviously, you know, if there's some problem with it, we won't do that. But to me, it looks like we could map some pretty cool commands to that thing. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm, I'm excited about what Valve's doing there and how they're, they're pushing Steam OS and all that kind of stuff. Well, the idea of being able to play like Dota or, you know, even League of Legends or, you know, Planetary Annihilation on your couch, lean back kind of experience with a controller, I mean, that's super awesome. Like for me, that's super compelling. Like yeah. I want to be able to do that. Yeah, I'm definitely thinking about getting one of those Steam boxes. What the heck was that? Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> do we have a secret cam? Yeah, you know, it's it's uh, it's kind of fun. Uh, if you were paying attention to the live stream before we kind of started, we were screwing around with that. Yeah, the little so, GoPro. Yeah. That thing's cool, man. So what what what's going on here, Mike? Looks like they're moving out to one of the asteroids. 
That probably don't mean anything good for you, man. Uh, no, no. <laughs> it, it means possible impending doom. So, what, what's a space race kind of look like? Like, what, what, what's your like? So, when you see an opposing player's commander take off like that, right? How do you answer? How do you respond? I think that's something that we're all going to have to figure out over the next three months. But um, you know, the first thing you get, you have to think is this planet is done, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I've always had this vision where you start off on a planet and you're fighting, and then maybe you go up to a moon and you do some fighting. And the planet gets destroyed, and now there's just the moon left, and there's some outer asteroids, and then maybe the moon gets taken out, and you have commanders that are hopping from asteroid to asteroid, cat and mouse game, as the rest of the system kind of melts underneath, underneath them. It, it's it to me it makes sense, right? These 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 commanders are are destroying these systems yeah. as they go, like locusts, you know, uh, Riddick style, or uh, or one of my favorite movies of all time, which. Uh, admittedly, is is uh, is a, a cheesy uh, movie, uh, but um, why is the name slipping? The the one where the where the guys come down with Will Smith, built, um, Independence Day. Independence Day. That's yeah. a great movie. Yeah. That's a fantastic Day. movie. Don't apologize where, for that. John. Where you've that got is a fantastic. Well, movie. It, it's a little. It's there's some cheesy elements to it. Although I think the extended cut, they do a little bit better job with that stuff, mm -hmm. but. The whole kind of Independence Day, aliens going from one system to another, just basically destroying it as they go and sucking all the resources out. That's what these commanders do. And if they get in a battle with one another, you know, they can literally destroy the entire system. Yeah. So, wow, that's a lot of fabbers on one building, bro. That's insane. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love it. So that's your orbital stuff right there, right? That's no, your... that's a nuclear launcher. Oh, it's a nuke? All right. It's a oh. nuke. Uh, I wonder if the other guys playing are watching the live stream and uh, seeing what you're doing. <laughs> it's a possibility. That's, I wouldn't put it past Garrett. <laughs> so, okay, all right. Worst case scenario, if if Mark builds engines on that asteroid, uh, how soon would you know and be able to respond? He's not going to know because he doesn't have any scouting out there. I don't have there. any scouting out so, there. I won't know until the uh, asteroid starts making... Uh, Unorbit like motions. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Again, did you see the video? So somebody did a video. I think where I think it was nine or fifteen or some amount of nukes, and then I posted it. Oh, or no, it was like yeah. eighteen nukes or yes. something. And I was like, well, "What about one hundred and eighty? You know, let's do more." And then so somebody, I think it was they did one hundred and forty-four or something at once. Yeah, yeah. And it was it was an extreme amount of nukes. It looked good. It looked good. Well, you know. Effects-wise, you know, we have a lot. We have a lot more work to do. I think. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the stuff is first pass. Even the planet smashing effects are first pass. Oh, well, that's a nuke right there. Yep. Yeah, that is a nuke right there. Is that the one you just fired off? Yes. <laughs> My guess at this point is they've abandoned their Earth-based base and are just using it for energy production and stuff. So if you can take it out, you might slow them down. Pretty much. I also think there's going to be some interesting twists when, if you know, if you're playing on a, on an army with more than one commander, right, and you have to wipe out all the commanders, yeah. you could kind of send one out and keep one on the planet and be dual basing it. Yeah, mm, that's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> so is, is he leaving? Is he hopping the asteroid now? It looks like they're leaving the asteroid. <laughs> well, yeah, because what <laughs> you do is, is not you. Good. <laughs> You land, you land, yeah. You land your guy there. You build up, and then you get your commander. You don't want the commander to ride it all the way in. No. Uh oh. It seems bad, right? <laughs> no. We still, we actually still have this kind of fundamental issue of what to do when someone just parks their commander in orbit, right? Like just oh, right. in between planets. Um, you know, we've been debating several different ways to solve that. We're not 100 percent sure it's a real problem. Um, but we, well, we can't just let you let them sit out there forever, right? Right. Well, you know, interorbital. I don't know, air-to-air -air stuff, I guess, maybe? Well, or or inter interplanetary space warfare yeah. that everyone has been asking for for forever. Oof. Yeah, it's not looking so good. Madman Mike. Not looking give good me, at give all. Me a, give me a damage report here. Um, <laughs> that's the damage report right there. It's, uh, so this it's hurtling around the sun. You are in trouble, I think. Yeah, I think I'm in a little trouble. It's kind of interesting. We can we can actually tune the speed of these things. You know, there was a time when we were like, okay, it's going to be real orbital mechanics. You know, Ryan's been working on all this stuff, and it is. It's based on real stuff. But you know, we have fudge factors in there, and one of the fudge factors is 
how fast does this thing come in? Uh, and right now it's, it's about 10x what it realistically would be just so we can make it uh, happen somewhat in real time. Uh, we still have a lot of work to do. I think on the approach shot, there's a little bit of wonkiness in, in the way that that happens. Uh, we're going to do better with that too, but uh, the feature works. It just visually looks a little whack sometimes, depending on the angle you come in on and stuff. Right, right. Oh man, you're going to have to chrono cam this too. Well, oh. it was real. Wait, is it going to do one more loop? Or is it coming in? Oh, we got one more nuke going off. <laughs> One, one, last, asteroid. one last ditch nuke. There it is. Here it comes. Oh, man. This is the moment. Is the this nuke, is the game. Is the nuke going to land before the asteroid? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. I saw the nuke go off. That was cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. We're, we're toast. Well, we're not toast. You're toast. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Did it work? It, it worked, I just didn't get to see the effect. Oh, oh weird. Something happened with their dev build, I think. Or or maybe we were or just too far out. Possibly I was too far out. Zoom in, zoom in closer on ChronoCam it. Uh, I have to restart ChronoCam, or not ChronoCam, Coherent crashed on me oh. a while ago, which is why I haven't been playing. Oh, <laughs> great. Oh. Give me a second, I'll, uh, I'll restart it. Okay, all right. I'll see if I can get back in. No worries. This is how we test our reconnect code. Yes, this is how we... Yeah, this is a developer build too, it's great. Do all sorts of stuff here. So, I so mean, let's take some questions while yeah. while he uh, plays around with uh, with that. Absolutely, fire your questions. If you asked one earlier, we didn't get to it. Just go ahead. I've and actually got an out. iPad here that I can even read some of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Look at us. We're all we're all set up here. There you go. Jack has one. Do you want planets to have any kinds of any kind of effects besides visual, like gameplay effects? How how about lava bubbles or something? Uh, yeah, I'd lo I'd love to do that. I can't say that that's bubbled up as you know, a massive uh, top-level priority, but uh, definitely more environmental stuff would be cool. Geothermal vents, you know, lava bubbling, that kind of stuff. That would be rad. Um, let's see here. Would you implement split-screen cam? Yeah, that's that's one of the major features, actually, that's missing, but uh, yes. What sort of clan mechanics will we have? That's been a subject of much debate. We're, so I wanted to to basically allow people to form their own faction effectively. Like your clan is effectively your own faction. So you'd have your own commander and your own dudes and have clan wars and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I can't say much more than that because we haven't worked out the details, but mm. that's the general idea. That's cool. That's Galactic cool. war with clans, you know. I ch you know, four clans challenge each other to take over the galaxy and they all battle over, you know, a long period of time. It'd be awesome. How's it, how's it going, Mike? Nah, uh, it doesn't look like I'm able to reconnect. Oof. Lame. Oh, those developer builds. I know. I tell you, though. Let's, let's do a couple more questions and we'll peace out for today. But I tell you what, we should come back next week or maybe the week after that, show a little bit more of the game. So one, one last question from Omrecker was, uh, he's been having issues getting through a full game because of instability. Are we having instability? The answer is yes, we are having instability. We have another build on deck. Uh, probably, <coughs> actually it might even be the build they were playing on. No, pr no, it probably wasn't. We have another build on deck with more crash fixes in it. We just, we added so much stuff mm -hmm. in the last couple of weeks that we just introduced a bunch of crashes. So we're tracking, we're tracking those down. Yeah, and it's definitely what, a build a day thereabouts? Yeah, is what shooting, we're for, for. shooting for about a build a day. You know, uh, basically coming in the morning, do a bunch of bug fixes, do a build at noon, play test it early afternoon, release it if it's good, um, and then rinse and repeat. Yeah, <laughs> and go from there. I mean, we are definitely committed to delivering a solid, fun, entertaining game. And I think we've done a good job doing that, but of course there's always things to tweak and improve and optimize, and that's something we're on top of for sure. For sure. Let's take one more question before we get out. How about that? One more. Mike, one more. Hold the trailer. Will we be able to distribute player spawns across multiple planets? Yes. Yes. Short answer. But um, yeah, I, I want you to be able to set up any kind of scenario where you can pick whatever planet you want to start on, or I'll start on the same planet. Yeah. It's sandbox, right? So I want you to be able to play the game how you want to play the game. Absolutely. Well, hey, thank you for joining us so much today. I had a great time. Do you have a good time? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, this is much more relaxing than banging my head against wacky virtual texturing <laughs> bugs or, yeah. you know. Well, get ready to do it again, I guess, huh? 
That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you guys for joining us today. It's It's been a blast. Planetary Annihilation, of course, is our baby, and it's available now for $60 on Steam or through the PA store. Please check it out if you haven't already. Uh, don't forget we're on uh, Facebook, Reddit, on Facebook. Twitter, Jamie Aver at Twitter. It's, What's your Twitter? It's uh, Nicholson B. Nicholson B. We've got uh, the forums, obviously, forumsuberint.com. Yep. Um, just keep the comments coming. Yeah, I'm going to be starting a thread uh, uh, really quick about uh, unit ideas. I know people have a lot of ideas. Oh yeah, and yeah. Uh, I think we'll do something. You know, where we'll take some of those ideas and get them in the game. So absolutely. Well, hey guys, turn on Planetary Annihilation. Have fun. <laughs>